Well, thank you very much. It's an honor and a pleasure to be back to Centro di Studi Americani. I think I've been here since uh, I became ambassador more than any other place uh, in Italy. Because it's always interesting, it's always exciting uh, subject of conversation that takes place here, typically involving American, American interests. I'm particularly pleased to be here with my, one of my predecessors, Ambassador Spoli and Ambassador McFall. And I want to thank Paolo and the, for all the work in uh, organizing uh, this event today. Um, but today the, the topic, as we know, is Russia, um, and particularly the focus on Ukraine and the fallout of Russia and Ukraine. You know, Ukraine's a sovereign state. Its people have the right of self-determination. Uh, this is the first time really since post-World uh, War II that a country has so uh, aggressively invaded a neighboring uh, country. And there are consequences with that, of course. Um, either you, you have to respond in some way, collectively, those countries uh, that are affected by it. Um, if you don't, then the message sent that there are no consequences. Uh, and Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, other countries that could be uh, at risk uh, could be themselves quite concerned about what the future may hold. So collectively, we, Italy included, very actively involved, and the European Union decided on uh, an approach of sanctions, not military action. Uh, that's what may have been done in the past. And it's important that a message be sent and we stand up together in a unified way to make it clear this conduct of invading a neighboring country uh, will not be tolerated. Now, sanctions have um, three purposes, three basic purposes. One is to change behavior. It's not a penalty. It's not something designed just to punish you. It's to say this conduct, this behavior is not acceptable, not appropriate. Number two, it's to deter future conduct and constrain decision-making. And number three, it's to stigmatize. It's to make a clear signal that this conduct today uh, that is you're engaging in will not be accepted by, uh, in this case, European Union and uh, United States and other associated countries. Russia holds the key to removing those sanctions. The Minsk agreements that we all agreed to have to be complied with to the fullest extent uh, possible. They need to have elections on the Donbass, they need to have the cessation of military uh, conflict, and the eastern borders uh, must be restored. And there's talk often of substantial compliance or partial compliance. Uh, we just had a discussion about that earlier. No, it's really got to be compliance, unless there's some reason that you can't comply with it. It's not a willful non-compliance that will give you more time to operate. It's, it's compliance, uh, as agreed to uh, by, by all the parties. And that's what we expected. Now, Russia is doing what it can to create divisions among our alliance. Uh, they have, I think, assumed that this alliance won't hold, but it will hold, and it has hold. And just uh, this week, I was uh, in Washington with uh, President Mattarella's meeting in the Oval Office with President Obama, and later uh, the next day with lunch with Vice President Biden. And the issue of sanctions came up, on both occasions, and it was a very firm commitment on the part of President Mattarella that Italy is completely supportive of the sanctions and will continue to be supportive until the Minsk agreements are complied with. So we're, we're pleased to see that. And um, Vice President Biden also commented at our, at our lunch meeting that in 2009, with the beginning of the Obama administration, and President Obama, who really came to office with a commitment uh, to make a difference, to be cooperative, both in Congress to try to work together, and also with respect to our relationships with Russia. 
you know, Joe Biden said he made the first speech, and it was a speech agreed to by the administration, coming to Russia to talk about the reset button that Hillary Clinton, the Secretary of State, mentioned, and as the president himself bet. We want to invite Russia into the community of nations. We're all better off if we work together, if, our, if we trade together. Uh, it will reduce tensions. It will be good for your own people. It will be make you more, all of us more prosperous. And by having an interdependent relationship, it will make future conflict a lot less likely. But what happened, of course, is the whole mechanism was thrown into reverse. It's like we're back. Uh, on the Cold War days, uh, it's created a huge amount of conflict, co uncertainty, controversy. But at what cost? You know, first I would look and say, well, at what cost to Russia? We had a discussion at lunch uh, today of about weakness and strength. Is Russia weak or, or strong? Does that make a difference in terms of uh, our calculation? Our hope would be that Russia would be strengthened over time. We, the United States, wish the best for Russia, but what's happened is that Russia has become weaker, and I do think it's relevant we, uh, as to what the future of Russia is. Remember this, Russia and Putin wants to be seen as a uh, respected power, superpower in the world, and uh, it's important that he get that to him and to Russia, that he get that respect, as though Russia is one of the two superpowers like we used to have. Here's an interesting fact that I'll bet most of you aren't aware of. Uh, Italy is larger than Russia in terms of GDP. Russia this year has declined last year three point, over 3.5% GDP. It's on target to probably decline as much. Pretty soon Russia will be smaller than Spain. Uh, I think Mr. Putin and Russia thought they were going to have $110 barrels of oil forever. Well, it's down in the 20s, and it's likely to stay there for a long time. 65% of their income is dependent on energy. And if you lose 70% of the value of that, that's a huge hit. And so when you're spending down your reserves, when the ruble value has more than cut in half, when you have no more foreign direct investment, when you're mortgaging your future because the technology you need to do further drilling in the Arctic is not available to you because of sanctions. It, it does not present a promising future. So Russia should be focusing. How long can they go with drawing down on their reserves? Maybe two years. If we're here two years from today and nothing's changed, uh, Russia will be facing some very, very dire consequences. One area that it's strong in is defense. It's increased its defense expenditure, 30%. It's modernized its military, and I suppose that does give them some strength that has to be paid attention to. It is a nuclear power, along with 10 other countries. Uh, but in terms of its future, its economy, uh, it's so reliant on energy, and I would not want to be investing long-term in hydrocarbon uh, extraction uh, with any real confidence. It needs to revamp its economy. It needs to be brought back in the community of nations we're still interested in that. We would like to have sanctions lifted at the earliest possible date because there's a price to be paid by a lot of countries, including America. And I know Italy and a lot of economic interests here think Italy has been particularly hard hit. Well, it's, it's paid a price, but here's the, here are the numbers. Its trade has been reduced because of sanctions based on our calculations that we can share how we make those calculations, one-half to one percent. Now, that's, that's a significant amount, but it's not as significant as it's being portrayed. I know there's a great deal of pressure in Italy on the part of the industry, uh, Confidustra and others, to say, in June, let's revisit sanctions, almost with the notion that if sanctions are on long enough, it's time to lift them. No, sanctions are on as long as there isn't compliance with what has been agreed to. Uh, that's what's important. So this debate and discussion today is highly relevant, very interesting, and I'm, um, I'm looking forward to it. I know that our goal and our hope in the United States and with President Obama as he enters his last year is to make as much progress as we can to getting all of these issues re resolved, especially 
uh, Ukraine, Russia, and bringing our relationship back on the positive course that it should be. So thank you.